Egg House of Frostcourt and on the Space Coach today, going to be reviewing this. Queen Shadow by E.K. Johnson. She's the one who wrote the Ahsoka novel, which was fantastic. This is as well. Now, if you notice, um, this is paperback because for whatever reason, they couldn't release a hardback in the UK. And it's a similar but different cover. Um, the other one, uh, the hardback, it has like its full face on, whereas this is to the side. And it was split half and half with the Queen's face and the Senator's face. This is all the Queen's face. Um, so let's see what it says. When Padme Naberi, Queen Amidala of Naboo, steps down from her royal position, she's asked by the newly elected queen to become Naboo's next representative in the Galactic Senate. Padme is unsure about taking on the role, but ultimately cannot refuse the opportunity to serve her people. Together with her loyal handmaidens, Padme leaves her idyllic home for the glistening capital of Coruscant, where she must learn to navigate the treacherous waters of politics and forge a new identity beyond the Queen's shadow. So that's the high-level um, explanation. Great book. Um, it opens and closes with almost exactly the same chapter. And um, in the opening, it's like, well, think back to the end of Revenge of the Sith, Padme's funeral sequence, where you see her and like, it moves up this way, you know, like um, her body lying in repose with flowers and all of that hand on him. It starts like that. And I thought, oh, they've cut straight to the funeral and there'll be a flashback. But no, she's just lying on a raft, drifting out into a lake on um, Naboo. Uh, so it's an interesting play of words, but obviously at the end it is her funeral that they're going to. So basically it's like the she's um, finishing up her second term of, as queen and like the can only run for two terms and each term is only two years. I thought it was four years. So she's only been queen for four years. So this is not that long after a, uh, The Phantom Menace. But um, it does a great job of focusing on her and her handmaidens who all have very... Um, fascinating roles and uh, just it goes into like the styles of the dress and the hair and it all has a purpose some of those really heavy ornate dresses they're basically like not like spaces but they're like a battle suit in fact it mentions uh, the black dress that i think it's sabe wears when she's playing the decoy in the phantom menace you know it's like and it's called a battle dress um and it's all lined you know like phasma's cape and all that sort of stuff is lined against blaster fire it's like that as well and some of those really heavy ornate dresses have an escape door at the back that she can just step out of and flee, which is fascinating. And obviously they have shields and stuff in there as well. But anyway, she's finishing her term of office and um, the new queen asks her if she would be the senator for the Nabu for Nabu and the Chomel sector. So after some, oh, I don't know, she agrees to do it because she wants to serve and Nabu wants to serve. That's what they do. So um, obviously she can't take all her handmaidens with her because now that her term of office has expired they have their own lives to lead and um, some of them will come with her but others will go on into art into politics all that sort of thing again that's also very interesting you get to see a bit of the culture of the Nambu. but she gets to Coruscant and there's the occasional chapter from like a news report spliced in and at first it's not very complimentary about the new senator from Nabu. you know the um uh, she's like, what's the expression that I'm looking for? It's like a high fashion dress horse, basically, with her outfits. Um, so they don't take her seriously. And she wants to do well and form alliances with the senators to get things done. But she doesn't want to use um, her connection with the Palpatine because then no one will trust her. You know, so, oh, you just went and run into him. He sorted out all that for you. You've never done anything on your own. So she has to build her own relationships with senators. And um, she does, and it's the usual suspect. So it's um, Senator Organa, Senator Mothma, Senator Mina Bonteri that we do see in the Clone Wars, and Senator Clovis, um, who we also see in the Clone Wars. Uh, there's like one or two others as well, like Newt Gunray gets a mention and all that sort of thing. So she's basically trying to um, help this planet that's um, had some volcanic activity that's destroyed its aqueducts. So the water isn't getting anywhere. People are dying of starvation. She has been on the Dura Steel or Dura Crete um, committee, which basically... Um, regulates uh, how uh, their version of concrete is made and transported. Um, so she has the experience of that. The planet needs all of this raw materials. So she helps lead an expedition there to see what they can do to help. And the other senators 
go with that. Now, it is very interesting seeing all those other senators because this really does feel like an extended few episodes of the Clone Wars cartoon that focuses on Padme because there's no Anakin. There's hardly any Jedi mentioned in this at all. I think Deepa Balaba is mentioned and joins them on that mission to that planet, but not as any main character, just as a very far background. I think Obi-Wan is mentioned and Anakin is mentioned right at the end. Um, but other than that, it's her on her own. And it's interesting um, because she's very good friends with Mina Bonteri, the senator from Onderon. But there's a couple of times when she's going to see her, she can hear that um, Bonteri is on the, um, the Holovid with someone and that someone is clearly Clown Dooku which is a nice little nod because obviously um, she's a member of the CIS parliament as well that we see in the Clone Wars and Senator Clovis is there and he's obviously a banking senator he wants to help her Senator Organa does not trust her at all at first he stumbles across Padme in the lower depths of the Senate where the droid she's been assigned has led her off into this dangerous area it's about to get demolished and she'll get killed unless he can just turns up and he was basically was following her to see what she was doing so he kind of rescues her but they do become friends and they do become very strong allies as uh, does um, Mon Mothma but it's a great book I say it really is like watching the Clone Wars thoroughly enjoyed this so many great stuff in there just little bits about the Senate procedure and several other worlds that get mentioned and like I say the customs of Naboo is great I thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, Moff, uh, Moff, what am I saying? Sorry. Um, the people that we see in the films as her personal guard, so Captain Panaka, uh, Captain Tycho, and all that stuff, they are main characters in this as well. Panaka less so, but Tycho definitely, because he's having a relationship with one of her handmaidens. Now, one of her handmaidens, I think it was, one of her other guards, or something like that, I can't quite remember now. But yes, thoroughly enjoyed this book. It was excellent, as you'd always expect from a Star Wars novel in the new canon, and as you would definitely expect from E.K. Johnson. And like I said, it really ties in the prequels and the Clone Wars to the new canon in this book, with all of the shout-outs and the callbacks and the references, like how it opens and closes um, with that sort of like um, fake death scene and then the actual funeral death scene. Marvellous stuff. I'd want more Padme. She does not need Anakin Skywalker. Uh, I mean, as a character. She's more than capable of standing on her own in this book. Like what she is in those episodes of The Clone Wars when she's off on missions and Anakin isn't around. But yes, Queen, Charots, yeah. Queen Shadow is excellent. I thoroughly recommend it. Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this content. Leave me a comment or suggestion for a comment topic you'd like to see discussed. Or like the video.